Hi everybody, welcome to another ITD DWF arcade repair video. Well, actually this will be the first one of, I think, a long series. What I have here is a quite rare clone of Cinematronics Tail Gunner Arcade that was renamed as Skyfire. This clone was made in Italy by a company called MicroHard, probably during the end of 1979 and the start of 1980. I have received the boards from two cabinets actually, one of course is Skyfire and the other is another Cinematronics arcade clone made also by MicroHard. This other clone original game was Ripoff, which in the Cinematronics case was spelled correctly with 2F, but the clone game was renamed as Ripoff with 1F instead of 2. Well, you know, why bother thinking about a good name? Here is the Skyfire entire power supply. But unfortunately there was not enough packing material and the transformer had enough room to break free from the chassis. Its plastic frame almost completely disintegrated. Some wiring posts are now floating because of the broken frame. There is a disconnected wire here. Anyway, this is a rather simple linear power supply with peak capacitors on large heat sinks. Here is a close-up picture of the damaged wire posts. The disconnected wire was probably going to this capacitor positive terminal. This wire has a broken insulation, maybe chewed by a mouse. And on the bottom side of the chassis, there are more wires with chewed insulation. Well, looks like there's probably more mechanical work needed than electronic work to restore this power supply. So, first of all, I need to fix the transformer and mount it again on the chassis. I've then removed the wire posts that are no plastic support anymore and soldered short wires to the transformer winding wires. The joints were covered with heat shrink insulators. These are the primary winding connection, by the way. Then I fabricated these rather primitive supports to mount the transformer back on the chassis. I've used aluminum that's easy to bend but should be strong enough for this transformer. However, my mechanical skills are very poor. Notice how even some of the mounting holes on the chassis got deformed by the transformer movements. In the end, the transformer could somehow be fixed again in its place. And these are the supports on the other side. After that, the primary connections can be restored. The unused primary tap is for 220 volts mains, and I connected the 240 volts tap. Then I've restored the insulation on the damaged wires. So the mechanical part seems over, and we can check the electronic parts now. First of all, I soldered the wire that was disconnected from this ring terminal. Then I started testing all electrolytic capacitors. The measurements of the big battle ones are shown in this picture, they are both good. Then I tested the PCB mounted ones with the ESR meter. The meter barely moves on this one and that's not good. And in fact, there is almost no capacitance left. This is dead. So that dead capacitor would be substituted with a new one. Now I can check all diodes and transistor junctions with the multimeter, starting from the big bridge rectifier mounted under the chassis. And I didn't find any problem on it, by the way. 
Then there are a few more diodes, two more bridge rectifiers and a couple of transistors mounted on the PCB. Also on these ones there were no obvious shorted or open junctions found. First of all, I draw the power supply connector pinouts by following wires to the actual components. We haven't been able to find any documentation about these clones. On some pins, I've just indicated the voltage polarity and I'll complete the pinout once I measure the actual voltages. So let's power on and measure the voltages on the first connector. 5 volts is ok. Here we have 20 volts. Plus 12, and that's OK. And minus 5 volts. So far, so good. Let's now check the second connector. Here we have minus 24 volts and then plus 24 volts, of course. Mm. And this must be AC, not DC. Yes, that's about 7.5 volts AC for the CRT filament, so all looks good. At this point, I started inspecting all the game boards for bad parts. For example, on the audio PCB, this tantalum capacitor let its magic smoke out, as we can see from the brown traces on the connector and on the PCB. Then, on the monitor PCB, I found quite a few transistors shorted. All the boards inspection and repair, however, will be covered in future videos. After substituting all the bad parts found on the various boards, it's time to inspect the wiring harness and figure out all the correct connections. Finally, it's time to power on the boards. Everything is connected at this point. I'm going to check the CRT anode supply with the high voltage probe. So let's power on. No. This catched fire, wow. Well, this is a bit depressing. A new tantalum capacitor failing shorted in this spectacular way does not happen very often, and at least it's the first time for me. Then I found other shorted tantalum capacitor like this one. Indeed, 170 milliohms is a rather good short circuit. Now the power supply is not even working, we have no outputs. But I've found the mains fuse blown, so with a bit of luck this could be the only problem. So I've replaced the blown fuse. And the 25 volts DC supply is back. Also, the minus 25 volts rail looks okay. 
and for good precaution I also check the five volt supply. So far so good. However, now I'm going to replace the failed tantalum capacitors with aluminum electrolytic capacitors rated at 50 volt DC. In this supply bypass applications, there is no real need for tantalum ones. I've also checked again all the capacitors on the monitor PCB and found more shorted tantalums like this one that has a black spot on its side. This one instead turned almost to an open circuit. This one too went open circuit. So, even on the monitor PCB, I've replaced the 35 volts tantalum capacitors with aluminum electrolytics rated for 50 volts DC. However, this large failure of the tantalum capacitors is really puzzling. It's simply too strange to be true. So, it's time to try again. Mm, this noise is not good at all. At least, it seems nothing smoked badly. Now, I've disconnected the monitor entirely. The data cable, the power supply cable, and even the joystick cable. Well, there is still some bad noise, but different now. Anyway, this red LED glowing means the logic PCB is stuck. Let's check the voltage regulator outputs on the audio PCB. This is the plus 15 volts regulator and the voltage is correct. Hmm, and this is the minus 15 output, so minus 12 volts is not good for sure. There is something wrong, let's check the unregulated rails again. Wow, minus 32.8 volts, how that can be now? And plus 27 volts on the other rail, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's indeed almost minus 33 volts. Nothing is getting hot, which is good at least. Finally, seeing the two unregulated rails having different voltages did ring a big bell on my brain. Here is the schematic of the plus and minus 25 volts rails. As you can see, it's very simple, only the bridge rectifier BR1 and the two big electrolytic capacitors plus a couple of 5 watts resistors. Of course, to have symmetric plus and minus rails, both the transformer center tap and the center connection between the two capacitors must go to ground. But wait a minute, where is this capacitors to ground connection in the actual power supply I'm just servicing? That is missing for sure. Without the connection and no load, the two voltages still look symmetric because of the two equal value resistors across the capacitors. But as soon as any current is drawn from either rail, then the voltages go crazy, trying to find a return path to ground by other ways. That connection to ground was made by the brown wire with the open insulation that I thought it was yet another chewed wire. It was likely soldered to one ring post and then sometimes during storage or transport it just came loose. I believe, however, that was really a bad way to bring a ground connection to the capacitors, so I've added one more piece of wire soldered in the center tap between the capacitors and going to a chassis screw nearby. 
Then I've removed the 7915 negative regulator that was giving minus 12 volts and tested it out of circuit, but it still shows a bad output voltage, so I'll substitute it with a new one. Everything is connected together again, so let's power on. Well, no smoke, no fire, that's a good progress finally. This audio effect may be some logic board or soundboard failure. Adjusting the brightness on the monitor gives also a good picture. Some vectors look bad, however. Anyway, all the other boards repair will be shown in future videos. So let's power on. Hmm, it seems something died here. But observe that the CRT high voltage went to a few kilovolts, then faded. Mm, so the mains fuse blew up. Let's first try with the monitor disconnected. Mm, it died again. The audio PCB is also disconnected now. Ah, the fuse died again. At this point, it's evident that the fault is in the power supply itself, so I disconnected the regulator board and then measure the unregulated voltage first. Oh, another blown fuse. However, observe how only the positive rail voltage raised and on the negative side it remained at zero volts. So I disconnected the bridge rectifier that it doesn't seem to be shorted anyway and removed both filter capacitors. Even with the transformer center tap disconnected I could still measure a short circuit to the chassis. Until I noticed this, the metal support that I made at the beginning was very close to the transformer contact and touched it when I changed all the wiring harness needed for the new board set. So I modified the support. And now it has a much larger clearance from the contacts. Also, the support on the other side was trimmed a bit to have a larger clearance. So, it is time to try to apply power again and hope this last fuse have a longer life than its other siblings. Since I don't want to risk any new short circuit, I first use a series bulb. If it stays off, it means there is no short anymore. Ok, a short circuit and the positive rectifier output shows a good voltage. Let's also measure the negative output. It is ok too, so far so good. Now I've restored the capacitors, so let's try again. 
This time the bulb flashed because of the capacitor's rush current. The two unregulated rails look fine, however. I'll now quickly check all the regulated output voltages. It seems that finally everything works fine again. Power supply was used for another two months to service two Cinematronics ripoff arcade clones. The repairs of all the various boards would be shown in future episodes. I hope this video was interesting and you learned something. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. It's all for now. Have a nice time and thank you for watching.